if someone were to say to you, what was the purpose of Christ's atonement? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? For many people, the first thing that they think of is something relating to Christ's suffering for our sins. That's an important aspect of the Savior's atonement. Scholars sometimes refer to this as penal substitution, meaning Christ suffered the penalty for our sins. He's a substitute for us, standing in our place. Another possible answer to the question, what was the purpose of Christ's atonement, is to conquer Satan. This probably isn't the first thing that comes to our minds, but it's another important aspect of the Savior's atonement, and Jesus emphasized it in his final hours. He said, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world, meaning Satan, will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the cross, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Christ teaches that in his death, he will be conquering Satan. Later at the Last Supper, he says, the ruler of this world has been condemned. Scholars call this the Christus Victor model of the Savior's atonement, that on the cross, Christ overcame the devil. Many scriptural authors have testified of this principle. For example, in Hebrews 2, we read, since therefore the children share flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. It's very clear in this verse that through Jesus' death, he destroys the devil. Paul also taught that on the cross, Christ disarmed the powers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Christ's death didn't overthrow a worldly kingdom, but rather he accomplished a cosmic victory by overcoming the devil. What I want to highlight is that when we deeply know in our hearts that Jesus conquered Satan and won the victory, it can change the way we feel about our lives. Here's an analogy. Imagine watching a sporting event in which you care deeply about the outcome. What if you knew from the outset that no matter how far behind your team was, no matter how many mistakes your favorite player made, no matter how bleak things looked, your team would win? Can you see how this would totally change the way you watched the game? You would have a feeling of peace and assurance even if things looked bad. So here's the spoiler alert. Jesus wins. The Doctrine and Covenant says that we can have confidence in the triumph and the glory of the Lamb who was slain. I love what Judah Smith, a pastor in Seattle, writes. Regardless of the state of the world or the poll results of your favorite politician, Jesus is still in control. He wasn't voted in and he can't be voted out. He rules and reigns over the affairs of mankind. Because Jesus lives, I can live differently. I can act and react from a place of peace and an attitude of assurance. Jesus is in control of my past, my present, and my future. Despair over my past failures or fear over future problems cannot control my present because Jesus rules with me in peace. Then he quotes a passage from Colossians, which reads, Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Smith continues, sits? He's seated? Shouldn't he be pacing the sidelines, yelling at his team to run the play, make the pass, beat the opposition? Standing implies action, urgency, activity. Jesus should be standing. But Jesus is sitting. Sitting is the position of reigning. Jesus is not on his feet. He's relaxing. He's in heaven and all is well. All is finished. Do you ever feel like you're pacing on the sidelines? You're thinking, we've got to hustle. We've got to make something happen or we're doomed. That's not what Jesus is doing. He has already won. You and I just need to make sure we're on his team. Think about your life. What troubles are you facing today that you could let go of if you deeply knew that Jesus Christ wins? Are you carrying a burden? Sometimes we worry about superficial things, and sometimes we worry about things that are extremely serious. Either way, if we really know in our hearts that Jesus wins, if we're on his team, we don't have anything to worry about. To see more videos like this one, simply search Seeking Jesus. Thank you.